In this video, we're gonna go step by step of how to change your disc brake pads on a bicycle with hydraulic disc brakes. I figured out which pads they needed by looking at the backing on their current setup. Ideally, you did this before ordering new brake pads, just to make sure you didn't need a new rotor. But on your rotor, there is a minimum thickness etched in, and that is something that you wanna make sure because you don't want your rotors too thin and turning into a pretzel on you. Here's our setup for today. We have front and rear pads. The rear needs a rotor because they waited a little bit too long. It was metal on metal. It's a Shimano setup, so I need needle nose pliers to pull that cotter pin. T25 Torx to replace the rotor. I'll also have a torque wrench to tighten down the bolts. This is a piston spreader or brake pad spreader. This is going to be used to open up the pads and push those pistons back in place. Some Allen tools just in case I need to make some adjustments. And my handy dandy work gloves so I don't get dirty. We're going to start on the rear of the bike because that needs the most work. So we're pulling off the wheel. I've already shifted down to my hardest gear. Once you remove the wheel, you do not want to pull your brake lever because that will cause you some headaches with the pistons sticking out. Now that my wheel is pulled, I want to spread open my brake pads. I do this before changing the pads because I don't want to contaminate the new ones or accidentally scratch them. And all I'm doing is evenly pressing on both sides to push that piston all the way back in place. Hydraulic brakes, as you wear them down, the pistons push in to make up for the distance and we're just pushing them back out. And we always wanna do it with that pad in place if possible. On Shimano brakes, they have a cotter pin holding in the brake pads. Different brakes use different things. Some are Allen, some use a magnet. No matter what, you want your pads secured in there. So here's the cotter pin and the tail was just pushed up to hold it in place. And now it's time to put new pads in. We have two pads for this type of brake. Sometimes you'll have four pads. Spring and then a cotter pin. This spring is side specific, so you'll see a left and a right. And we wanna make sure when we open this package, we don't touch any of the braking surface on the pads or on that rotor. So here's our spring, and I'm gonna sandwich it carefully without touching the surface of those pads. So this is how it all sits in that caliper. And I'm gonna be pushing in on the Shimano one, you push in from the bottom. So I'm gonna be sliding that up in there. All right, I'm gonna pull out the old ones nice and carefully. Now I'm gonna carefully slide these up, making sure not to catch any of the piston edge. Here's that new cotter pin, making sure everything's lined up. And then just pushing that new cotter pin in, and I'm gonna bend the tail over here. If you're just replacing your disc brake pads, you're almost done. The second thing you wanna do is clean your rotor. And you can do that with rubbing alcohol or a specific disc brake rotor cleaner. I use rubbing alcohol for the most part, unless the brakes are giving me a hard time and making lots of noise. You just wanna clean them with a clean towel on both sides until you get all of that excess grime off. The third thing you wanna do is put your wheel back in, make sure everything's in adjustment, and then test ride to bed in the brakes. And what you're trying to do is remove the coating on the brake pads and put a little bit of pad actually on the rotor to give you the best bite, but also make sure that you don't heat up the brake pads too much on that first ride and glaze over your pads or rotor and then get terrible braking power out of these new brake pads.
Let me know what questions you have in the comments. And as always, stay well, stay good, and remember to bike more and worry less.